The biggest consumer electronics show on the planet is underway in Las Vegas, with more than 4,000 exhibitors showcasing their state-of-the-art technology that touch upon almost every aspect of our daily lives. A day before this year's CES wraps up, we've invited a special guest who'll walk us through the highlights and all the fun details you wouldn't want to miss from this year's CES, because, well, not all of us are lucky enough to fly to Vegas for the event. Uh, Steve Koenig, Vice President of Market Research for CTA, the Consumer Consumer Technology Association, the producer of CES, now joins us via Zoom. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning from Las Vegas. Great to be with you. It's a pleasure to have you. We talked about uh, some of the inventions and, and the unveilings at CES through our segments. We want, we want to get a more closer, mm -hmm. firsthand experience from you. Uh, I mean, the records are pretty astonishing. 4,000 exhibitors, 1,200 startups. You are estimating to bring in some 130,000 attendees to the event. Can you give us an overall assessment of CES 2024? Yeah, well, I can actually give you some some updated numbers. Uh, we have actually over 4,400 uh, exhibitors uh, at CES this year. The atmosphere here is just positively electric. And I mean, a lot of business is getting done too. In addition to those 4,400 exhibitors, we have 1,400 startups mm -hmm. from around the world in our pavilion called Eureka Park. Uh, amazing. I mean, that is just uh, the, the energy is just palpable mm -hmm. down there in Eureka Park. But you're right. Over 130,000 industry professionals uh, will will be joining us here in Las Vegas this week for CES. That's why we like to say that really nobody convenes the global tech industry like CES. I might, uh, you know, point out that you might be a little bit biased, but that's OK, because I've seen the buzz <laughs> around the event and just the crowds and crowds forming. What a bounce back from the worst of the pandemic, I've got to say. It's really exciting yeah. to see even from afar. I've heard you describe AI as an ingredient technology in your previous interview, and it really can be applied to just about every gadget and product in our lives. You name it, you can apply it. Cars, clothes, robots, <laughs> laptops, who knew but shoes, <laughs> speakers and more. <laughs> I think this year CES definitely captures that sentiment of AI truly being an ingredient technology. How would you summarize a diverse narratives around the latest AI trend? Well, first I'll say I, I told you so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but yes, uh, AI is is omnipresent at, at CES. It's it's hard to go just you know booth by booth by booth and not hear. Uh, a story or a narrative about how they're using AI this way or the other way. I mean, across across the the tech ecosystem and across the economy. And yeah, there's been a lot of dialogue around generative AI over the past year, of course, and it's certainly a major topic at CES. But I would say, in addition to generative AI and a lot of the things that that we're seeing happen there, affecting and impacting personal computing, uh, which is very interesting. We're seeing AI in all of its forms. So like computer vision and vehicles, you know, how a, a vehicle perceives its environment, uh, natural language processing, we're, we're speaking to technology and machines more and more using our voice to, to interact with them, uh, like with generative AI, uh, but also uh, robotic pro process automation, which may or may not involve physical robots. So machine learning to all these all of the above you know tick all the boxes for ai it's it's at ces and to give you some some clear cut examples uh, of some of the interesting announcements that we've we've heard about this week at the show walmart announced uh, an enhanced ai enhanced shopping experience so if you're child is having a birthday and you just you just don't know what 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 should i get for this you can just type in child's birthday and walmart's enhanced shopping experience will make recommendations on chip dip cupcakes uh, you name cookies you name it it's like a personal shopper so that's that's cool <laughs> yeah. uh, mercedes has a new virtual assistant with four personality traits that you can kind of customize to your liking and i talked about personal computing and gen ai so many ai enabled pcs and many of them have a hotkey for microsoft's copilot uh, embedded in I mean, this is just the beginning of the conversation, it seems. Because CES is also a place where a lot of these uh, companies can flex their muscles. There are a lot of prototypes, too. Uh, some are just ideas being maybe developed in the early stages. Uh, for it to be commercialized, some products take a little bit more time. But one thing's absolutely clear, there's a huge opportunity here with AI. So where do you see the most potential in AI-infused consumer applications? 
Well, I think overall, we're in the midst of a very transformative movement. All this, this application of AI, uh, again, personal computing is a great example of, of, an, of an area of technology that's been absolutely transformed by AI in with generative AI. That's just going to be kind of part of the whole personal computing space uh, in a matter of no time. Uh, but also spatial computing, a lot of uh, innovation at CES this year with AR glasses, mm. uh, so many different improvements and, and, and innovations in AR, but also in XR uh, and with uh, metaverse and, and specifically the enterprise application of that we call industrial metaverse using mm. digital twinning, uh, Siemens talking about that uh, this week at CES. So what I'm saying is I think we're really moving from the old IoT, the Internet of Things, to the new IoT, which I describe as the intelligence of things. But why are we doing this? Why are we adding intelligence, you know, as you established uh, at, at the top of the interview, just all across uh, the tech <laughs> industry? Well, it's simply put, it's because adding AI to technology enhances the, the capabilities, the contributions, and from a consumer's pr perspective, the conveniences that, that technology delivers. Mm. So this is this is how we make things better, faster, easier, mm. and we can do more with them from, mm. from devices to digital tools to services. Uh, Mr. Koenig, I live in the city of Seoul. We're all about efficiency. So I'm down with infusing more AI into all of my gadgets. If my job can be done easier and more accurately, I'm absolutely down for it. Uh, here's another sector that got a lot of attention, CES, auto and mobility. Robot shoes definitely got our attention. The Sony and Honda partnership. I mean, how exciting is it for, although it was just for demonstrative purposes, a car to be driven in using a PlayStation, a joystick, a carbon fiber flying car, now I've seen it all. Uh, can you tell us more about the excitement around the latest in mobility and auto tech? Well, you named several highlights, but more broadly, I think over in West Hall of CES, which a lot of listeners may be surprised that CES is actually one of the biggest automotive events on the planet, uh, in addition to the broader technology sector. But electrification certainly uh, has been a trend in the past year and i think we've really doubled down on that uh, at ces 2024 honda announced their path for electrification with their zero series uh, vehicles that'll be coming over the next decade uh, kia has the platform beyond vehicle these are customized vehicles that they're all electric really interesting to see mm. also the enhanced uh, an enhanced experience in car and a lot of this has to do with screens mm. and lg display has an amazing 57 inch pillar to pillar lcd screen uh, that it's just forget your big tv it's in your car <laughs> <laughs> your big screen tv is in your car uh, Software-defined vehicles, uh, vehicles are, are like rolling computers. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of companies at CES like Sonatus, BlackBerry with their QNX operating system and other digital tools to, to really design vehicles from the ground up and, and program them in different ways mm -hmm. uh, for different use cases or, or, or applications or performance, what have you. And of course, a lot of innovation in sensors uh, from from lidar to to other other sensors like cameras from Mobileye that enable ADAS or a, a drive, uh, autonomous systems uh, and autonomous driving mm. uh, or advanced driver assistance systems like I said with ADAS. Uh, in the near future, can I expect to have like a moving office in my car uh, w while my car drives itself? <laughs> I, I think you can be very productive while you're while you're driven to work by your vehicle. Yes, sounds awesome. All right, so the Korean media clearly hyped up uh, about the LG and Samsung's translucent OLED TV as well as their smart home AI. Agent. These are all mm -hmm. selected by the Wall Street Journal as one of the 16 gadgets to put on your radar. I mean, to be honest with you, I think most of us can agree TVs are pretty intrusive in our interior design. I mean, most of us probably place a TV first and then the couch. That's like the first step when you move. But if your TV is translucent, I get that's kind of a game changer. That's not all. <laughs> Hyundai is flying a car as well as Mobi on Hyundai Mobis capable of sideway vehicular movement also stole the spotlight that would make parking, parallel parking particularly, so much easier. What is your overall evaluation of South Korea's latest gadgets and what was the reaction like at the scene? Well, I have to say, uh, in a word, stunning, just absolutely stunning. I mean, transparent TVs, come on. <laughs> like you said, I mean, we're so used to this big black thing on the wall, you know, when, at least when it's when it's turned off. Now, 
the TV is is pretty much invisible. Hmm. Uh, and flying cars and, and a, a car that can crab walk. <laughs> I mean, this this is it's ridiculous, but it just just incredible. South Korea is clearly a global leader in tech innovation, and we're so proud to host so many uh, global brands from South Korea: LG, Samsung, Doosan, mm. uh, Hyundai, mm. Kia. The list list goes on. SK is here, mm. uh, so yeah, uh, amazing and stunning. All, all this innovation coming out of South Korea. Mm. Uh, I, I love b- these big machines, and, and uh, I talked about Hyundai. HD Hyundai has at their booth a, 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 constru- a, a construction side of the future, mm. and, and all the machines in there are autonomous. There, there are no humans. Uh-huh. Uh, if there are humans, they're working behind the scenes, working remotely, uh-huh. controlling the, the equipment. And Doosan has an electric bobcat uh, loader. Uh, it's it's all electric. It's amazing, and it's positively quiet. There's there's no loud noise or anything. It, it's 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 really cool. But there are a lot of other smaller uh, South Korean companies as well. And one of the things that I do at CES is I lead VIP tours uh, of different groups for for different clients and so forth that are guests of ours at CES. And, and I've taken uh, many of our tour groups around to a lot of these companies, including a, a one Malm.ai. A South Korean company that that generates and engineers artificial humans or mm. artificial employees for different sectors uh, like hospitality or, or maybe banking, mm. uh, and Y Robotics. Uh, they they're from South Korea. They they make wearable robotic harnesses, mm. which are really uh, a, an upgrade from the old Velcro backstrap, if you remember that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just amazing innovation from South Korea at CES this week. All right. I'm glad you got to cover some of the smaller companies that don't get in spotlight in the major headlines. Thank you so much. Uh, I know this is probably a tough question because you're so well versed with so many of the companies there. But what caught your eye the most among all the cutting edge gadgets from over 150 countries? Which innovation were you most excited about? Well, I have to say transparent TVs are pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> But uh, I think you referenced these. Uh, there's a company out in Central Plaza outside uh, at CES uh, called Shift Robotics, and they have a product called Moonwalkers. These are basically like sandals with wheels that allow you to walk three times faster. I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy. Uh, but it's really interesting and has a, a specific use case, certainly for workers like in a warehouse where you don't want to be running around mm. all the time. If, if you can if you can move mm. a lot quicker, that's that's really helpful and allows you to be more productive. Mm. But I have to say, personally, I love to cook, and I've been amazed at all the different AI-enabled cooking uh, machinery and appliances that are here at CES, from AI-enabled air fryers <laughs> to grills. Uh, and with AI on board, it's like having a, a celebrity chef like looking over your shoulder, you're never gonna you're never gonna burn the cake, uh, and that's not that's my big challenge is baking. So I'm I'm excited to get started, and maybe I can make some cookies for my wife that'll be perfect, and and I'll take all the credit, and and I won't say anything about the AI. <laughs> now, would it be something if all the gadgets in my kitchen started talking to each other and they did all the cooking themselves? Like that would be so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if they can only set the table as well, that would be that would be helpful. All right. Uh, we're, n- most of us, our listeners, are not there on site. Is, is there anything else important that we've perhaps missed today before we wrap up today's interview? Well, we've covered a lot, and I'd have to say there's more to come. We still have one more day to go, mm-hmm. so listeners can stay tuned to ces.tech for all the latest from CES in Las Vegas. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Koenig. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.